I'm a writer and producer for a production company that I started. I hope to be a writer and director with an emphasis on world cinema and global media. I am from India and I have worked as a producer. I'm in Canada to really elevate that whole experience of borderless collaboration. Currently, I'm a part-time digital artist slash graphic designer. But later down the line, I want to start a YouTube channel. Now I am a full-time student, but I am also a spoken word poet. I am the first graduate student to undergo the brand new MA MBA pathway between the Creative School and the Ted Rogers School of Management at Ryerson University. I'm a uh, classically trained tenor with a 15 year international career. I'm pursuing a career as a development executive because I love storytelling and I want to say in the kind and the quality of content that's coming out of Canada. My number one piece of advice for the Canadian media policymakers is to is to continue to explore the international market of co-productions with Central America and Latin America. Thanks to streaming services, accessibility to content far beyond the scope of one's own culture is becoming the norm. Canada needs to assert its unique place in the world by pumping out content that is bold, iconic, and distinct in its location. We had a guest speaker in one of my classes, Valerie Creighton, who said something that always stuck with me. She said, if we don't stand on the side of content, then we don't stand anywhere. I think this speaks to how we need to define content in terms of telling genuine stories from the diverse population that we are. As a person of color, I'm personally starting to feel exhausted about stories that are involving trauma and pain that come with being a person of color. I want to see stories with brown people depicted in everyday narratives that are compelling and moving and funny. I believe that this audience consideration is one of the main reasons why TikTok creators and TikTok itself are some of the most dominant forces in the media industry today. A twist on Marshall McLuhan, I think it's fair to say that in the world of content creation, the audience is also the message. Rather than focusing on what's mainstream now and considering a new, let's try and look to the future and say, where will media be in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? If the Canadian media industry can continue to create these showcasing opportunities such as primetime or even mentorship opportunities where students can get that constructive feedback, it will truly build a group of talented and confident young Canadian creatives who aren't afraid to put themselves out there and will help add to the success of the industry. I think that the role of you know future media workers is going to be um, to fill in some of the gaps that those uh, creative computational systems have. Scaling up right now seems like the biggest issue. We do have sort of like this great pool of talent. We just need to leverage it, I guess. The next big thing that I believe that we'll start to see is a lot more of narratives grounded in reality and authenticity. In order for us to drive characters that move us, we have to be able to portray characters and stories that look like us. Real human stories will continue to resonate with uh, audiences globally. I think the next big thing in media is going to be live streaming or broadcasting with synchronous communication with the audience. TikTok as an emerging platform has untapped marketing potential for the film and TV industry. The unique algorithm allows for high levels of engagement and virality compared to other social media apps. I think that the media we create will become an increasingly transmedia and interactive experience rather than a passive viewing. During the pandemic, we have definitely become a very passive audience. So I feel like post pandemic, the media industry is definitely going to push for some sort of way to get everybody up and interacting with society again. And that will be done through immersive experiences. There's a lot of talk of the metaverse. Um, and Web3 properties like NFTs and cryptocurrencies, they're gonna start to gain popularity once we start to see some consolidation of all of those technologies. We're, we're entering a space where artists can, uh, at least in a digital sense, and hopefully in other ways, can get paid for their work and, and be supported more directly. I'm very, very excited to get into the industry and be able to work with like-minded people and be able to um, you know, put into practice all these technical skills and theoretical skills too. You can create content from any corners of the world, share it and have it be accessible to nearly anyone. When it comes down to it, here in 2022, all you need is an idea and an internet connection. Learning by doing is going to be incredibly important because I mean, the current model was really set up for you know, the, the second and the third industrial revolution. It is my opinion that the Broadcasting Act is not sufficient. 
I do not believe that the adequate approach is to broaden the scope of what we regulate without changing how we regulate. I am terrified by what the current social engagement with the traditional performing arts is and how slowly they are engaging in current, let alone future technologies. I think I'm most excited for um, is diversity. You know, we're, we're filled with beautiful, diverse and creative um, knowledge. And I think we really need to kind of push for that. I have honestly survived the pandemic thanks to Schutz Creek. It effortlessly normalized a extremely important and critical conversation around the LGBTQ plus community, relationships and things that honestly make us human. This industry is full of the kindest, most hardworking people I have ever met. And it's a real privilege to be able to meet and work with everyone.